And okay, broadcasting. So everybody, Google promised last year they wouldn't come out with any major updates before Christmas. Well, they did. They decided to come out with Panda, and um, I'm hearing a lot of stories from a lot of people about you know how their sites were affected, especially lawyers. Google says that only one percent or whatever of the results were affected. But they don't tell you that there's like 60 million results, and that out of those, those whatever 13 to 16 million results, um, most of the sites that get hurt are the ones on the home page, or the first couple of results. So you know, I'd be interesting to know what the statistics are for that. Um, by the way, everybody, uh, I had tried to block my kids um, because they were making a bunch of noise, and here's the result of that. They decided they would just knock the divider down, so now they're following me around again. Say hi, guys. Yes, everybody. Okay. All right. So, um, I just heard from Charlotte before we started this that a lot of her sites got hurt. I was talking to Andre about this. I wanted to know if Ginsburg or if anybody else, like Alexander, any of you guys would like to hear any stories you have about your ranking and the fluctuations in the update on Christmas. Yeah, I got a, I had a big hit. I had a site that was like pegged at number one for years, and this is also around the time I moved it to WordPress, and it got slammed. Okay. And I've, I've done the 301 redirects, and it's coming back a little bit, but uh, I don't know what uh, exactly if that was the cause or what, but it really, really... <laughs> Okay, just really quick before we go on to anyone else, have you installed Webmaster Tools on that site? Yes. Okay, did you check all your 404 errors? Yes, and I, I, I read all. Yes, I had a hundred of them. Okay. They were, they were, I, I fixed them all. I did okay. 301 redirection. Okay. But it did, I didn't do it for a couple of months because I didn't know. I didn't didn't occur to me that was the problem. Yeah, well, I, I, I did the same thing. I've got 4,000 of them that Andre just pointed out to me. That's the only reason I brought it up. Um, okay, so you noticed a dip, but remember, the Panda update after you noticed the dip. So, you know, when Panda, it's not really going to have to do with backlinks. It's going to have to do with your copy. Now, Alexander, how about you? Um, I... I went ahead and put something up there on the chat. Uh, I haven't talked to Bill. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, but I did talk to him briefly yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we didn't actually. We didn't even take any hits. Matter of fact, our site is doing better. We're number one mm -hmm. uh, now. When when you run a search, you know, basic Indianapolis personal injury attorney or accident attorney, Indianapolis. Sure. Some of the main yeah. Some of the main search terms we're popping up there. Number one, front page or uh, first page of the organic to. Yeah, so. this, is what I was, this is what I was talking to Andre about. This is, these are local terms. What about your national terms? Terms that you were on the first page for, like car accident attorneys. See, we, or we never, we've really focused truck local. accident attorneys. Yeah, we've stayed locally. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, and what I've seen, and maybe Charlotte can correct me if I'm wrong, is most of those. Terms that have a precursor like your city um, actually went up for a lot of sites um, because a lot of people are saying that Google had a little yeah. bit of a, a little bit of a rollback. Um, in other words, prior to their April Panda and Penguin attack on high-ranking websites, um, a lot of sites like mine lost their their local term like Los Angeles and went on to page two or further back. It popped up for some national terms because Google was punishing sites that SEO'd uh, their rankings. So if you tried yeah. to get a bunch of backlinks for Los Angeles or your city or whatever, they would actually push you back in the pages. And in any ways, there were a lot of problems with that. So a lot of people are saying before the Panda update on Christmas, there was a rollback uh, to some of the old results as to how your site performed before April of 2012. But uh, then all of a sudden they run the panda filter on Christmas. By the way, their pay-per-click earnings are way down. And uh, so interesting that they do this before Christmas, right? Um, and so we have a situation now 
where a lot of people lost a lot of their national terms. So I don't know, Ginsburg, is that your situation? Well, I mean, again, most of my sites are local. I mean, they're Atlanta, Atlanta bankruptcy, Georgia Social Security, things like that. The right. one site that did not get hit was my bankruptcy blog, which is more of a national, I mean, it's more national, and that one actually did pretty well. Um, one thing that I, I was thinking, and again, I, I could be completely wrong on this, but um, I have multiple sites. I mean, I was always a big believer in having a lot of different sites, and the content is all unique, but I wrote it all. So I'm wondering if, you know, my syntax or the way I write, you know, triggered the duplicate uh, content filter. That's, I don't know. High, that's highly that's unlikely. Um, it, it, look at the sites that are beating it. And by the way, I know what you mean. You optimized your sites more to be local. But mm -hmm. Google will pick one of your sites and score it, you know, one of your pages on one of your sites and score it for national ranking. They based you know, it on IP address. You know what's kind of well, I, and and I've got a, a you know a virtual server a, a, a server account, so my IP address is for I have like you know eighty five sites out there, so yeah. Um, yeah. They're, they're you know pretty much on the same IP. Although I'm starting to diversify that a little bit. Um, well, that's a problem. Right interesting. Right. One. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I need to work on that. Um, okay. And I'm I'm starting to I've actually started to move a couple of them to different places with different IP addresses. Um, although I still, they're still registered. I mean, I don't do. Maybe I should do a, um, you know, a hidden reg, you know, secret. What do they call private registration? Well, um, well that's all stuff that we can talk about, uh, you know, together over the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but well, but let's get a little bit focused here. This update and your loss of rankings. Thank God, thank Google God. for the first time does a rollout that we're aware of that's not coupled with a million other one. So now we know mm -hmm. for, sure for sure that you lost rankings because of Panda, not because of too many IP addresses on different, you know, not on the same nets, not because of your syntax across multiple domains. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that one of the issues... This has to do with primarily semantically related content. And I think all my links, I mean, for example, in bankruptcy, I've got a lot of links that are Atlanta bankruptcy attorney because that was always the way I was taught to do it. Yeah. You know, have it linked back to just you know terms that were relevant instead of click here. And uh, and I'm trying to diversify that now, but that was that was what it was set up for a long time. But that's but more that's of a Google part. Penguin issue. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have to do with Panda. It could. You it could. could. Your internal link has, has all those exact match anchors. Yeah. That could flag a Panda over optimization penalty for sure. Right. What do you? What was the big thing with Penguin then? What do you think was the? What was the main thing they were going? Penguin for? has to do with too many. Yeah, Penguin is a different algorithm, and they haven't done their update yet. They they only ran Panda on this one. They ran them together back in April, so nobody was sure what the problem was if it was Penguin or Panda. But now we know since they just ran Panda, Panda has to do with on-site copy. So if if you don't use enough. Related keywords, and this goes for you, Charlotte. If you've done the old school where you have the keyword mentioned three or even one time in your copy that you want to rank for, heck, these guys can say you over optimized. So, what they're looking for is semantically related copy. And if you look at the sites that are beating you, you're going to see that they're all loaded with semantically related copy. What does that term mean? Well, your semantically related copy is going to be. Instead of saying wrongful death attorney six times, they'll say you'll mention related words. Google knows how to score it. So you'll talk about the fatal loss of a loved one, the loss of a wage earner, mom, dad, grandpa, bereavement, funeral, graveyard, funeral expenses, um, catastrophe, death, murder, killing. Um, those words need to be peppered throughout that copy in a grammatically correct form. Um, and we're going to get into flesh Kincaid scoring because it's really interesting that Microsoft doesn't have it on their word processor anymore, but they did for Windows 98 computers, um, where you can actually score the document to see what your grammatical and college level is, because I believe Panda is scoring it like that. 
Uh, and that is basically, in effect, they could put out 20 million Indian SEO companies overnight by doing that. So it's a smart move. Um, but what you've got going on here is look at the web pages that are beating you. Um, look at the sites that are beating you and really read their copy and open up a thesaurus because that's where you'll be able to get most of these words. Um, and you're going to notice a pattern. And anybody, correct me if I'm wrong. You're going to notice a pattern that the sites that are beating you are using a lot of semantically related words. They're rarely mentioning the keyword that they want to rank for. Uh, instead, they're, you know, like when I discuss Los Angeles, I talk about Angelinos and the City of Angels. And I mentioned that it's in the Golden State instead of just California. I talk about surfing, fun in the sun, uh, you know, the, uh, the bicycle uh, boardwalk, bicycle path on in Venice Beach, and how you can be injured there and suffer a rollerblade accident. You could drown in a swimming pool and suffer a swimming pool accident. Um, so I'm using semantically related words that are uh, something that you would probably find in a Wikipedia article. And I think to buttress this argument, a lot of people were complaining that Google is favoring its own properties because they're just showing Wikipedia now is the result when you do a search for personal injury attorney. But look at it and drill it down, guys. The Wikipedia articles are loaded with semantically related context and content, and they also link out to the source that they're citing, which Google wants to see. So if you're linking out to a lot of .edu's, .gov's, and educational sites, and you just have a couple of commercial links, they're going to think, okay, this is an educational type site. This is a quality site. We want to rank these guys. Is everybody following me so far? Yep. yep. Any, any questions? Anybody? Okay. So what's going on here is... You guys, if you lost rank, if you guys lost ranking, you need to get out your thesaurus. You need to bust open your Wikipedia uh, because you have two things that you're trying to rank for, and also you need to be using H cards and all that other stuff that that Andre's been talking about. H cards, V cards, geotagging. You need to tag your site so Google knows what geographical location it is, or if it's a multi-site with multiple locations. Each, uh, lo each uh, page for your local geography has to have an H card in it for that local location. So Google can score it better and rank it better. And you need to bust out your Wikipedia <clears throat> and just do a search for your local city. If you're in Houston, do Wikipedia for Houston. And you're going to see that Houston, you know, Houston may, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the cities there that you want to rank for may have a local name or... You know, Texas has a name like the Lone Star State, so you should be using Lone Star State somewhere in your in your body of your document. Um, you know, if you're talking about accidents, uh, you want to be mentioning mischance, you, uh, mishap, incident. If you're talking about you know car accident, you should be talking about fender benders. You should be talking about rear enders. You should be talking about freeway, roadway, roadway, highway. California, you should mention Route 66. I mean, that's going to hit two things at once. It's going to hit your local geography, and it's going to hit, uh, you know, a freeway, which is semantically related to potentially a freeway accident. So these are the types of things you guys all could be doing. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is rewrite this, the pages that fell. In addition to that, when Panda scrolls through your site, Panda looks for other pages on your site that use substantially similar keywords or duplicate copy. A lot of people who had multiple cities used to have one car accident page and they would just do like an edit, find and replace, and they would just replace the cities, you know, like they do Long Beach, Los Angeles, whatever. Well, under Panda, that's a duplicate content penalty. One, everybody listen to me. One bad page on your site will pull your whole site down. One bad page on your site will pull your entire site's ranking down. Only one bad page. So you may have just one bad page buried in your thousands of spammy pages over the years that you've written. You know, go in there and no-index the pages that aren't ranking right now and start rewriting them. Just leave the pages that are ranking up. 
and rewrite the ones that aren't. And don't expect results overnight. Uh, when I hit my first Panda penalty six months ago uh, and I started rewriting copy, it took me about three to four months before I rebounded after I rewrote copy. But they're getting substantially more and more difficult and they're ranking your sites harder and harder and harder uh, every time it seems, uh, and I could be totally wrong, but it seems like when there's a, you know, any kind of a, a problem as far as revenue goes, uh, all of a sudden the organic um, algorithm changes significantly. <laughs> uh, it's just a strange correlation that I'm seeing. But you guys, uh, look, they're telling you that there's a way uh, to, to rank. They've been, they've been talking about uh, semantically related keywords uh, for years. You can do a search on the circle of legal trust. Jonathan Rosenfeld and I have both written and co-written several articles on uh, how to find semantically related keywords. There's also the Google suggested search on the left, which gives you variations of your keywords because you should be using reverse exact match anchors, not just your exact match. Your exact match should be only a small percentage of your overall keyword weight. That's more of a penguin issue, but not if it's on site. So John, if you have a lot of links on your site, like bankrupt, bankruptcy attorney, you know, what city are you in again? Atlanta. Okay, if you have bankruptcy attorney Atlanta a million times all throughout your site, mentioned on every page, pointing to the home page, like a lot of us used to have back in 2007 up until just recently, it worked. Now, Google is looking at your off-site links and they're looking at your on-site links and they're saying, oh, he's trying to rank for those terms. Let's slap him down. That's not natural. You know, he should be using click here and learn more and check this out as his anchor text. Um, you know, so they want to see, uh, you know, naked anchors and things like that as well. Uh, so just your naked anchor uh, with no anchor text at all, they want to see that. Um, and there's articles in the Circle of Legal Trust that go into all this stuff. It, everything's there for you. It's, it tells you exactly the steps to take, how to find the keywords, and how to fix these on-site issues. But one thing you can fix right now is get rid of all those exact match anchors in your navigation on your site. Don't have hundreds of links in your copy pointing back and forth. Google's smart enough to find the pages on their own. And that segues into this next issue, which is... I have a nursing home abuse page on my site as well as an elder abuse page. I noticed you know, when I was scoring my ranking loss that I have the nursing home abuse page uses a lot of the same keywords as the elder abuse page. And the elder abuse page ranks for both nursing abuse and elder abuse. So I've, you know, I've had to make a hard decision, but you know, today I'm going to go ahead and no-index that nursing abuse page. And the reason I'm doing it is because my theory is, is Panda scored both pages, and Panda thinks that I have tried to, um, that I'm trying to manipulate the rankings or whatever, and so they lowered the value of both pages. So my theory is, and we'll get back to this you know, when their next algorithm update takes place, is that it's better to not have lots of pages that have very similar uh, keywords and content, especially when you already have a page that's ranking for those keywords. Um, so you may want to take a look at that as well uh, as a potential problem that you're having on your site. Um, I've seen that some, uh, Google's not really looking at the title and description really to determine the value of your page like they used to. They're looking at the copy I'm, I'm noticing that uh, less copy seems to be ranking better. You guys do the research on your own. Look at the sites that are beating you. That's how you get your keywords. That's how you find out you know, what you're doing wrong by reverse engineering the site that's beating you. And uh, you're going you're gonna to notice a pattern. Not a lot of copy. Uh, very few pages on the sites themselves. Um, and one page might rank you for several cities. So if you're bankruptcy attorney Atlanta and you want to rank for some other cities in Georgia, uh, you might just want to put them in a copy somewhere or mention them a few times. That may be enough to actually rank you because Google uh, is punishing sites that over-optimized and they're, they're helping sites that didn't. Um, so for example, if you do a search for personal injury attorney in Los Angeles, I show up on page two 
I optimize my site heavily for Los Angeles. Um, but if you do the same geo search, you know where you guys do the, the Google search tools and you type in the city that you're in? So you know how to do that? No, I, I don't know. How, how Anybody do you know not know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Well, Google, well, Google has, has the search tools. Search tools. Um, and, and right now where you sit, Google sees right. your IP address. They see what city that you're in. And they're trying to return the results for all the local attorneys in your city without you having to type Atlanta. They're just assuming that any search you do is going to be for a local attorney. You can use the Google search tool and check other cities by typing in their zip code and that returns the Google search result for the IP address of the particular city you're searching in. So in the upper left of your search engine bar there, right below it, you have Google search tools and I think you use show more and it gives you the option uh, to enter uh, the city that you want to search for. And I can send you a link, or I can post a link on my Google Plus that tells you exactly how to find it if you can't find it after the video. Um, but anyways, if you do that same suggested search uh, for San Diego, which I don't optimize my site for at all, and I think I only have a couple of child pages on my site, I show up number one for personal injury attorney. Isn't that crazy? But for but Los for Angeles, Los which is the city I want yeah. to rank for, I'm on page I'm on two, when I used to be number one. So the point I'm making is Google doesn't like it that you're trying to optimize your site or SEO your site. They want it to be natural. You know, they want to see a natural link from somebody, and usually that's going to be a click here or whatever. Um, but they also want to see on-site copy that looks natural. If on every page we're mentioning Atlanta all the time, they don't like that. Um, you, you, only, you only have to mention it a couple of times uh, throughout your site. Not in the title all the time. So be sparing of all these keywords. And then I wanted to turn this over to Andre because he's got some other things he wanted to talk about too with Panda. But uh, Mike and I don't necessarily agree on, on, on a couple of aspects, but what we, what we spoke about before was, um, you know, it's very important that you do have what, we, what I would like to call it an insurance policy. You can't just have one site that you can rely on, which I think everybody understands from, um, you know, our various discussions. But now in the light of what, what Mike is saying with regards to having a, a um, uh, main website and trying to focus on all the various different geographic areas. You might you might be better off looking at a second level or second tier of sites, focusing the more geo-targeted areas, um, and then looking at linking those back to your main site. Because you firstly you what you stand to gain from that is you stand to gain multiple listings on page one if it's done correctly. And secondly, you you're building up a, an authority and a brand on the on the internet as a whole. You know, it doesn't matter that they're all branded the, the, the same. If they are installed properly and structured correctly, and you're adding value to the user, you're going to start ranking each of those sites individually, and you're going to have multiple page one listings or multiple listings at least, whether it be page one and organic or page one blended, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you understand what I'm what I'm sort of getting at? Okay. You having you saying do use different domains or different pages within the site? No, you see, this is what my and this is what Mark and I we've had a disagreement. I think for the last two days or discussion, can I say over the last two days? I've got a client that has done it in the way that you just mentioned, um, Jonathan, and we don't have a problem with it. But we've also got external domains that are hosted on different IP addresses that are pointing to the inner city pages and they are ranking on multiple areas. I can't obviously name the client because it's obviously not in, it's not for me to do that. 
But now what Mark is saying is that you are saying you should rather just go the external route and not focus on doing the internal pages as well as the external domains. Now, if you take a, a, a sort of a split view of, of the, the sort of the middle row between those two differing opinions, it is worth doing because what you've got is you instead of relying on a single website that could be taken up by Panda, you've got the sort of an insurance policy. Can I put it that way? That you can still get some sort of business from in the event of uh, your main site suffering, you know, tremendously. Now that can happen either because of Panda or Penguin or whatever, or even because it might be hacked. You, you never know. Unfortunately, these things do happen. You can take as many precautions as you want. But the point is, is that you've got to diversify. It's the same with all your link building and everything. You've got to diversify a little bit and capture the different markets, you know, accordingly. That you can have multiple rankings on the on the first page. And hey, Andre, let me just interrupt really quick. Dan Goldstein of uh, First Page Design, or whatever it's called, he's Anthony Kelly's guy. He has um, a site, I think it's like attorneyus.com or something like yeah. that, attorney.com. Attorneys.us. Whatever it is, he creates a subdomain for each one of his clients. And some of those subdomains show up as the number one result uh, on Google. So we can do the same thing with Legal Torch. You can basically create a secondary site right on Legal Torch as a subdomain for your attorney name. And then you can set it up just like your website. So that could be an insurance policy as well. But that the point that Andre is getting at is you should have an insurance policy in case one of your sites goes down, at least you'll still have a site that's ranking for something while you're trying to get your other site sorted out. And I'll let Andre take over again. Yeah. I think it, it basically comes down to, I mean, who else to quote but Warren Buffett when he says don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to an investment. It's exactly the same on the internet, but especially with all the algorithm changes that that are coming. I mean, they're hitting us hard and fast, and, you know, one, one website is up the one day. I'm seeing the same thing with all the reports that I, that I run. I run reports every other day, and I've, I see my clients are up and down, up and down, and it's, it's really frustrating and aggravating because, you know, regardless of where my client is ranked, I still get paid my money at the end of the day. But, I mean, for you guys, you, it's literally taking food out of your mouths or, or money out of your wallets. You know, you... Um, it's an, not an afford. It's a business thing. It's a business issue, and and basically, I think diversification is one of the routes that you have to consider, especially with the various algorithm updates and the various threats that are out there, including competitor threats, algorithmic uh, threats, uh, hacking threats. You know that sort of thing. Is is I'm not saying try and kill the first page, but just spread your risk and diversify your risk a little bit more. Um, focus on your main site, you know, to get that uh, uh, into the main rankings. But have insurance policies that uh, that are secondary, that you've got something to fall back on, just in case. Yeah, and I'm a case in point. I mean, I have blogs that have always ranked well. Some of them on the first page, and so when I got hurt by uh, the penguin back in April, panda combination. Uh, at least my blogs uh, stayed pretty high because a lot of them were blogspot blogs, and for some reason all the blogspots jumped up. That's when people were saying that Google was favoring their own properties. Well, I benefited from that because I had a bunch of Google properties. You know, ultimately those blogs went down because I I, I don't really build links to them or, or or really do much to try to make those blogs rank. But <clears throat> you know, when you guys are doing your link building. You shouldn't just consider posting from your blogs. You should also try to get people to vote for those blogs in the form of citations and backlinks. And of course, we can help you here because we know a lot of different attorneys who who might you know want to link back to you because they like you or trust you. And that's you know that's what we're looking for, anyways. But um, you know, Andre and John Rosenfeld, <clears throat> you know, would I think agree? They're they're in accordance. If you look at John Rosenfeld, you know, he wrote a really great article on microsites, and that's really all Andre is talking about at the end of the yeah. day. 
It's a microsite, right, Andre? Yeah, that's basically that's basically it. I mean, it, it's basically creating that extra presence. If needed, if need be, you can build that out in time, and it can become a, a, a formidable site on its own. But you know, just get the initial sort of site together that you are ready to go in the event of something happening. Touch wood, it doesn't. But hard the weed. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Um, but also, what I wanted to bring into the conversation was something that Michael and I were talking about the other day, which is your mobile site, which is something Mike actually pointed out. Uh, sorry, microsite. Alex, do you want to? Should we finish that topic? Yeah, first? yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in in what that what that means. I mean, when you say microsite, do you mean you know, like if I start my own website, call it Lamontes Law Office? Um, hmm. Is that just a small site, maybe just one page, a home page, with some information? No. Yeah, that's that's strictly speaking, that's that's the type of site. But you know, you don't want to just have it there because you'll never rank anywhere just on a one-page website. You, it's got to have something that's that's got the about page, the contact page, and, and you know, every so often a, a post, maybe one post a week or one post every other week, type of thing. Just so that the spiders are regularly crawling it and, and Google and can see that it's updated regularly. Um, okay. You know, not, nothing to go and blow your 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 wallet on, but just something that's there and that's current, that's ongoing. You know, being updated from from that point. And then what I what I do, Alexander, is I have one site for elder abuse. I have mm -hmm. another microsite that's targeted just for car accident, another one for truck accident, another one for brain injury, and so on. And uh, in that way, uh, you just have a targeted site. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for Google because now they just they don't have to crawl this gigantic site and try to score it. They know this is a site just based upon this particular practice area. And if you link build to that, of course you can't say link building anymore. But if if you uh, get natural votes that are in the form of backlinks uh, to those blogs, especially if they are exact match domains. There's a high probability that those blogs will outrank your actual website, and then of course you link back to your website from those sites. Go ahead, Andre. Okay. You understand, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, you know, we just have the one big site with mm. the 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 we have the about us, and then we have about 15 different practice areas: brain injuries, truck accidents, auto sure. accidents. Sure. Bike, pedestrian, all that stuff, but it's all under BillHurst.com. Yeah, so I'm you see, wondering. Event, you know, using you as an example, and and touch wood, nothing happens, or God forbid, anything happens. But if that site goes down, you know what then? You know what I mean? Right. It's uh, whereas in the event of you having a couple of microsites or whatever, you can do like sort of redirects that redirect to those sites, you know, so that you're literally not using the losing the rankings, but while you're sorting the, the issues out, you know, so that's another, that's I another, see. yeah. Look, Just I've, to, I've had, it, carry it's on. a way to keep yourself up there, uh, you know, if, if, if your elder law site gets, takes a hit, you know, maybe you can, you, you keep your car accident site up there too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and of course you've got the opportunity to to have a couple a couple of listings on the first page too. So you know instead of uh, a one in ten chance, okay, I know that the the statistics don't work like that. Oh, but I see. I'd okay. rather have I'd rather have two or three possible chances for a for a client to click on my website than my my opponent who's only got one. You see, which is where schema also comes into it because schema puts that. That that result to your to the right of the the actual search, search results, giving mm -hmm. the client even more places to click. But okay. that's something completely different. I'm now just complicating the issue. But do you understand what I'm trying to get to get no, at? No, I I do understand. It yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, I think it is important just to have some sort of insurance in place. I mean, it's I'm not saying it's going to happen that you are that you will get hacked or that your site will go down. But I mean, you know. What happens if the hosting company goes under or something like that? You, there's, right. there's too many. There's too many variables, unfortunately. And and you know we battle. We've got a battle against Google as well. We've got uh, you know it's the world against us type of scenario. And we've we've got to unfortunately play the, the, our cards close to our chest and, and have our things together. Yeah. 
What I was going to go on to was the issue of mobile sites, um, just something that Mike picked up the other day. And while we were discussing this, I found uh, an article that Mike actually referred me to. Um, I don't know how many of you are actually getting involved with mobile sites or if your sites are responsive. Do you know what the, the term responsive means, everyone? I do. Okay. <laughs> Excluding Mike. Anybody else? A responsive theme, basically it will render your theme within a mobile device. So it responds to a mobile device. That's why they call it responsive. So your theme will look decent on an iPhone, an iPad, a tablet, or whatever. Okay. Um, a non-responsive theme, and there's a lot of non-responsive themes, and they just stay a fixed width. And so a person on a tablet may not be able to get the, the meaning of your, of your website. Now, Google's going to pick that up because they are tracking everybody's data. Every but every bit of searching they do on it doesn't matter whether it's on iPad or on Android. If you logged in, they're tracking your data. So they will know that you're on a mobile device and they will serve preferential mobile sites as opposed to a non mobile site. There's um, not conclusive proof, but it has there are there are some case studies which has shown somebody doing a search on their desktop and at the very same time doing uh, a search on their on their iPhone. In this instance, it was, a, I think, a Chicago, a Chicago car rental and budget came first for their main site. In other words, www.budget.com forward slash Illinois forward slash Chicago car rental. And on the mobile device, their actual mobile site came up. So that just shows what the that um, Google is serving mobile sites when it comes to um, mobile search intent. You know, somebody who's using a mobile device. Okay, now th there's two issues that we have uh, that we that we sort of discussed regarding that. If you've got a, a separate mobile site, in other words, your theme is not responsive. You're literally going to have two different web properties competing against each other. One for the mobile search results and one one for the main search results. So you're going to have to do your own SEO campaigns, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on a mobile site, so that you build up authority and etc. on those mobile search results. However, if you've got a responsive theme, you will not because your the same URL will be served even if you're on a mobile device or on a desktop. Does that make sense? Does to me. Okay. You guys, so get it, right? you guys understand. If you start going the dot mobi route, you got to start optimizing a whole new site dot mobi dot ginsburg dot com to rank on a mobile device. Why not just use your existing desktop site, make it responsive so it shrinks into a mobile device. Make sure all of your calls to action are above the fold, just like a dot mobi, like they should be, anyways. And you'll do a lot better, in my opinion, because now you can focus your efforts on optimizing one site instead of two. Roger that, everybody. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Andre. No, that was, that was basically, in a nutshell, before you rush out and go and, and go and invest in a mobile site, just make make sure you are aware of what what the what the pros and the cons of each of the types of sites are. And in my personal belief, I'm, I stand with Michael on that, is, um, is that you should rather go responsive because otherwise you're going to be duplicating everything, uh, at least duplicating the, the SEO campaign requirements that you're going to need. Yeah, you can't use duplicate content, guys. If you try to just rip yeah, your website true. and put it on .mobi, now you're, you're going to get a duplicate content penalty. And you're going to see a lot of these morons that are doing .mobi. That's what they're doing. And yeah. they're going to lose ranking as a result of that. So, in other words, just be careful before you rush into a, a mobile site. Think about it and uh, do the right thing before you sign any ridiculous contracts. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question about mobile sites? Are they ranking those differently? So, if I was involved in an auto accident and I just was there at the scene and I wanted to look up an attorney, um, yeah. you know, Indianapolis personal injury accident, and we don't have a mobile site now, but I think we're going to do one. Um, would another attorney with a mobile site rank higher with than us um, 
as opposed to if you were just searching on a computer? It depends. because it's my understanding, yes. Because um, what Mike and I were talking about the other day, I'm just trying to find that article, is um, your, basically your question is coming down to whether Google treats um, a mobile differently than it does uh, a mobile search differently than it does a yeah. desktop search. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, now, if you go into this article, which I'm going to put in the sidebar now, um, specifically point, if you go down to point number 16, I think it was, let me, or point, uh, point 12. Okay. You can actually see the search that I was talking about just now. On the left-hand side, it, it shows, okay, they're showing in, incognito result. Um, you know, obviously to hide that they're not signed in or whatever, but they're showing a set of results for uh, for a mobile user as compared to a set of results for a uh, a mobile user on the right and a desktop user on the left. Okay, the fact that budget comes up first for both is irrespective here because um, they've obviously optimized both sites, but it just shows you that they show that they're treating a mobile search user differently than a desktop user. Because they're returning a different, they're returning a different okay. site. Yeah. You so see, on, the, on the right, sorry, Mike. On the right, they're, they're returning their mobile site m.budget.com, whereas on the left, they're returning the www.budget.com. So, Alexander, what you're suggesting then is you're going to take the time and energy to build a completely new website just to rank on .mobi, and and what Andre and I are suggesting is. Probably it's a better idea to install a responsive theme on your existing website so it renders similar uh, to see. dot mobi, or at okay. least at least Google will see that it it's a responsive theme and they won't penalize you in the dot mobile ranking, which is going to start happening, guys. If your site's not responsive and it's not dot mobi, and someone's doing a mobile search, if you're number one in organic on your desktop you might be on page 5000 on a mobile device so you need to make some hard and fast decisions quickly you know to get up in, you know into the 21st century here when it comes to mobile devices and i believe and i and i think i'm right is a responsive theme is better because now you're not busting out two link building and content writing campaigns to two different sites uh, you could focus your other site as a blog or something like that that also has a responsive theme uh, and get way more bang for your buck and funnel all that link juice to your main site, which is your brand anyways that you want to rank for. Am I wrong, Andre? No, I, I tend to agree. That's my opinion, too. It's, um, you know, obviously there's a lot to read about this, but, uh, I mean, just if you have a look at that article, you know, that I put in the sidebar, that a lot of the results speak, you know, speak for themselves there. And it's just, you know, it's a typically, it's a logical route. You know, if you just think, sit back and think about it. Do I want to have two websites where I've got to put in double the energy, or do I want to have one website that is usable on both a mobile and and look? There's no doubt the world is going mobile. I mean, we all know that. It's it's just a matter of time. There may it may only be if you look at your webmaster tools, you may only have a 10% mobile user ratio at this time. But this time next year, it's not going to be 10% anymore. It's going to be 20%, 25%, perhaps even more. Mine's around I mean, 25 already. Okay, I've, I've got some clients, which uh, the one is on 11%. They aren't in Florida. And I've got the, there's another one. They're on, um, on about 18%. So you, you see it's varying on area as well. And I can imagine also in California, everyone's just walking around with their tops off on their iPhone. So, of course, yeah. it's going to be... Yeah, it's, it's you know that's the way it is. It's, yeah, if you're out in the sun, you know you're not going to be indoors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's that's just the thoughts that and and uh, you know say um, sorry, Jonathan. Yes, there is. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat box now. Uh, this one I find I use the most. It it helps a lot. But you can't once you're inside the site, you must actually put the actual URL you want to analyze. You can't. Um, Click through into another URL if you're on that uh, within those boxes you'll see. So mattcursley.com yeah. forward slash responsive forward slash is a tool because Jonathan Ginsburg asks, and this is just for people who didn't catch this. I'm recording this. 
is there a mobile emulator site to test these .mobi sites and your site for responsiveness on mobile devices? And yes, there is. It's mattkersley.com forward slash responsive forward slash. But like I say, so, you know, it's, uh, sometimes the, the, your home page might be might be responsive, but your internal pages might not. It depends how your whole site has been put together. So you'll have to enter the URL in in the box that he provides there. You can't click through onto another page. Of are, there site other, that are there any other questions about dot mobi guys about mobile sites? The responsive uh, the responsiveness. Um, theme, is there a, a, a place, a website, or a provider, someone that you would recommend to do that? Um, for me personally, I, Andre, I, he's doing it for me. He's reasonable, you know, if he's not busy, that's the problem. You know, he, he's got so many clients now because he's so damn good. It, it's really <laughs> hard to get him, but, you know, you're that's... Making me, you're making me blush, Mark. Well, it's the, the, it's the truth. I mean, I, I wouldn't have him on here speaking if I didn't think he was the best. I mean, this guy kicks ass. So if you want somebody to do it for you and get it done right, that would be the guy I would recommend. Um, other than that, any other, any other questions? You know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of factors that come into responsiveness. If you're in, like an HTML site and that sort of thing, nine times out of ten it's not going to be responsive unless it's HTML5, which I somehow doubt because not everybody's gone into the HTML5 route already. Um, a lot of WordPress themes are automatically responsive, and a lot of WordPress themes aren't automatically responsive. So you would have to see what you've got, and each case it has to be taken in its own merit because uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's, it's predominantly uh, behind the scenes HTML and CSS coding that needs to be done, and that's what the, it's not just a, a line that says. Okay, I want my theme to be responsive, and then the theme listens. You know what I mean? Some of the the widths have to be adjusted, and it has to identify what um, what device is being used, etc. So it's a it's a case by case. Uh, right. Sorry if I put it that way. Can you make it responsive to? Because you know iPads are different sizes than an iPhone, and can you make yeah. it respond differently to different devices? Most of the time, if you're doing a responsive uh, theme, it is responsive to the different devices. It's um, okay. That's part and parcel because, well, it should be. If your provider is doing a responsive theme for you, if or whoever you choose, just make sure they are doing for all devices. You know, don't just go for the iPhone because that's just a waste. Or don't just go for the iPad. Right. You know what I mean? Make sure that the guy's doing a proper job. Okay. Um, and just some housekeeping issues. Uh, Ginsburg needs logins for Legal Torch. Andre, maybe you guys could get in touch with each other by email. Hang on, I'll make a, I'll make a note. Don't worry. Let's let's patch him in. Let's get patches to our existing members. Let's get him on the Web of Trust, and let's let him have a subdomain for Georgia, and let him take over and be the chapter head for Georgia. And then, John, if you go to the Circle of Legal Trust website, you'll see the rules there. What I'm suggesting is since you're already in Georgia, we'll make you the chapter head, and you'll have veto power over anybody who competes with you in your practice area, whether or not to let them in the circle. Um, if they don't compete with you, we just have a vote amongst the originals to make sure that they're trustworthy. And we let them in. So if they're divorced or something else and they're in Georgia, we let them in. But your job is then to be their mentor and help them uh, understand attorney search better and building the social network that we're trying to build of trusted attorneys. And so your job would be to sort of shepherd these guys with what you've learned. Occasionally post an article on the Circle of Legal Trust blog that talks about something you may have learned or something you can bring to the table that we're not good at or we don't know about. Um, if you look at the circleoflegaltrust.com uh, blog, you'll see examples that Tony Castelli, John, and Andre have written where it's focused on attorney suit. So don't just try to rip an SEO mask article. Um, actually, you know, something that's going to be beneficial to lawyers. Um, so I'm going to let you and Andre know what that behind the scenes is getting you in, getting your own federal name set up for Georgia. And then in closing, 
anybody have any questions for Andre or me about Panda and, and things that you want to know so you're not freaking out about losing all these rankings? Because it's a big deal. That's another reason we're here is almost like psychological situation to let you know there is a dramatic one with you. I just want to add something, Mike, if I may quickly. In the event of, of rankings where you drop a, you know, quite a bit after an update, um, yes, you can be proactive, but I normally recommend wait, wait a day or two, a couple of days, don't panic, just breathe, and if it's not sort of improving within, can I say, five to seven days, Mike, would that be fair? So within a week. Yeah, maybe a little longer after a major update like Panda or Penguin, maybe two weeks. Yeah. Uh, just let things, let the dust settle because whenever they do the, um, you know, the updates, this happens. Uh, the same thing also if you're doing a link building campaign, if you don't, don't overdo the link building campaign. Do your link building campaign gradually and you won't sort of arouse any suspicion, but if if you see things starting to fluctuate, just carry on at the same pace and don't don't panic. Don't get into a, a you know a tizz or whatever. Uh, just do it properly and keep it keep it consistent, and and things will start settling down. If it if nothing's happening within, as Mike says, after a long uh, after a big update, then give it a little bit longer, but you know not too long. Um, you know, if you know that there's something something that's that's definitely not right, then try and fix it sort of ASAP. Yeah, and then I'm getting uh, some questions here uh, from Alexander, and John's probably going to have the same question. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to basically make you a chapter head for your state. This goes for Alexander and John. Mm. Um, so the home page for Georgia should just be about Georgia attorneys, not about injury, not about DUI. It should just be a home page that talks about Georgia, it talks about attorneys, the different types of attorneys perhaps. Most of this information is going to be right there on Wikipedia again. And you just make it fit for what you need. I'm going to build out my California page this weekend so you guys can see an example of how it should look. And then what you're going to do with our help, because uh, we're always going to help you edit and, and not just drop, let you drop the ball, uh, we'll go through and uh, help you set it up. You set up a practice area under categories for each practice area in your state. So if you guys do personal injury, of course, you're going to want to take charge of that personal injury section and build it out just like it was your own website. And then as we get a divorce attorney or whatever, you're going to add a, a category for a divorce attorney. And you're going to let him administer that section, but you're going to oversee it and edit it and make sure it's good copy because it's going to pull the whole site down and we want to build each other up. We're all about iron sharpening iron here. So our job is to help each other edit, make it look good, and add what we've learned here to really build Legal Torch out. And then, of course, you embed your Google authorship signals into those subdomains and they become yours. You do the rich snippet testing and your picture shows up next to that state subdomain. Am I wrong, Andre, on any of this? No, no, that's that's hundred percent. You're basically going to take ownership of it. It's going to be in your interest to look after that, to grow it, and everybody benefits from it. Instead of some, excuse my terminology, some little admin desk jockey typing articles, you guys are going to be doing it or paying somebody else to do it because your name is going to be there and you're going to stand to benefit. This is. We're basically giving you the blank paper for an insurance policy that you're gonna. We're not. No, we're not gonna ever take it away from you, unless you obviously do not manage it. I mean, I think that's fair enough. You know, it's a yeah. two-way street. And it's gonna become like a find law, but better than find law because it's real attorneys who are writing the copy, not that some was, guy. Not some yeah. guy at find law who just writes articles for find law and then. Mm -hmm post them on the Find Law blog network. These are real attorneys with real Google authorship signals who are actively involved in Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, who vote for each other, uh, who have strong authorship signals, and all those backlinks are going to be pointing to Legal Torch. So there'll be thousands of them. Mm. And everybody parasitically is going to benefit from that. Um, and who knows, you may end up making your Legal Torch site stronger than your own personal website. And the legal torch site is going to be linking back to your personal website, and it's all you know. So it, we're all going to benefit from that. Um, and then, 
in closing, finally, because I know some of you guys have to go. I know I do because of these kids. But I'll leave the I'll leave this thing running so you guys can stay if you want. Does anybody have any particular questions about Panda that they don't quite understand? Have I covered anything that was helpful that you guys are going to try to try to utilize? Yes. Yeah, the responsive site. That, that's really I, I just look at all my sites and none of them are responsive. Okay, that's not really a Panda issue. That's, yeah. that's kind of, but but as far as Panda, a lot of you guys lost ranking. So, do you guys understand now latent semantic indexing and, and semantically related words a little better? I do, yes. Okay. Look on the circle of Google Trust site or just type in Google LSI. Uh, type, go to Google and type in circle of legal trust LSI or latent semantic indexing and read the articles because there are specific articles that John and I wrote that tell you how to find the words, how to use them, and how they'll help you. Anybody else? I'm just looking here for the link to. Okay. No, I can't. I can't. Hey, Mike, what are you going to have that, that page set up on on uh, Colt? Or the legal okay. torch, sorry. Yeah, Circle yeah. Legal Trust is like the, the parent of Legal Torch. Legal Torch is, is attorneys helping consumers, whereas Circle Legal Trust is lawyers helping lawyers. The right. Legal Torch right. is, the, is the one you're talking about. And Andre, uh, you need to email him, uh, you too, John. Email Andre. Hopefully, you guys all have his email address. If not, Andre can type it in there for you. And he will set up a subdomain for you. Um, and we're just going to use the same privacy policy, terms of service, blah, 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 that we use on the main site. And we'll, so we'll set that up for you. But as far as the copy, your job is to immediately populate your state homepage, the main homepage for that subdomain, so it has content on it. And it should just be a generic page about attorneys and your city. So a great page for Atlanta would be, you know, Atlanta is a, you know, a, a city in Georgia, uh, well actually it wouldn't be Atlanta, it would be Georgia is a state in, of the Union uh, as of the census of blah 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 it had a population of blah blah blah. Um, there are many different types, uh, it, it operates under the English common law unlike Louisiana which operates under French civil law or whatever, but it, it, roll with it. Uh, there may be, uh, there are many different types of attorneys, uh, in particular this state is famous for its blah 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 attorneys. Um, and, and on the right, in the sidebar, you will see uh, the different types of attorneys in uh, Georgia, uh, in the different cities uh, in Georgia that have different types of attorneys. And then, of course, Ginsburg is going to have right there Atlanta, and then on, as a sub-page of Atlanta, he'll have personal injury, and that's going to be the one he's most focused on because that's the one he's going to you know, want to rank for. Uh, but as we get a new member in Georgia, he might do divorce, and John's going to help him set that up. And we're all just going to kind of help each other and replicate what Andre and I are doing for you guys. You'll replicate for the new member. And eventually the new members may even have some cool websites you want to get a link from, and they may be nice enough to give you one. Um, okay. But you guys, uh, Andre is going to get you the logins, the subdomain details. I don't know when, but you guys can communicate that. Now Charlotte, I believe, is a non-attorney. Is that correct? No, I'm an attorney in Alabama. Okay, so okay, then, then Charlotte, let's do the same for you. Uh, Charlotte, you know I don't have a problem fast tracking all you guys' membership, uh, but we're going to need to have um, some also uh, at least one article from you and John uh, for us to post on the Circle of Legal Trust blog to make it clear to all the other members because a condition of membership has always been that uh, you write an educational article that'll help the other members and get it up on the Circle of Legal Trust blog. Uh, but we can uh, have you become the chapter head for your state, and we'll set it up. Uh, we'll have, uh, so just look at the uh, email address for Andre there. And he also provided a link <coughs> on Koala Web that talks about LSI, so you guys can learn a little bit more about that. Heck, use this experience of writing your first page for Legal Torch uh, as an opportunity to experiment with LSI. 
Um, because as soon as you start working on your personal city and state profile on your subdomain, um, look for the site that's beating you, that's number one for the keyword you want to rank for. Look at their copy and maybe try to use some of those ideas in writing your first page uh, for your practice area in city. And, and let's watch it. Let's watch and see what happens. I think you might find that Legal Torch is going to be such a powerful site that you might end up being the top result even above your own site for those terms. Michael, what yes, I'm seeing, what I'm seeing on page one is not competitors as much as it is uh, like Lexus.com or Lawyers.com or that sort of thing. Those people are, are the ones that are beating me out um, after the change. I don't have any competitor uh, head on head that's beating me. Um, I don't know if I can do anything about that or what you guys' thoughts are on that. Well, that's that's unusual, and that's probably part of the fluctuation that's going on in the results. Um, they're really powerful sites, but if you look at the landing pages, there's probably not a lot of uh, semantically related keywords or anything like that. What Panda's mm -hmm. done is they've drilled down into the site and they've determined that it's got a lot of LSI within the site and ranked it that way. But look, with Legal Torch, it's because it's going to be kind of like a, a Lawyers.com or a Find Law, so it just gives you another opportunity to beat those sites. But what you're getting at is, well, how can I get any semantically related words from those sites when they don't even have any and they're beating me? What you want to do is you want to ignore those sites and look at the actual attorney sites that are above yours before those lawyers.com, Martindale, and Fine Law sites and look at their copy and try to get an idea of the semantically related keywords they're using that you're not so you can sort of devise how you want your pages to look from now on. Um, that's the only thing I can suggest because that's unusual. Typically, the top ranking page is going to be a Wikipedia type page because it's so stuffed with semantically related words. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> so everybody, you know, get in touch with Andre, Charlotte, John, Alexander, you know, get in touch with them and uh, we'll start building out <coughs> Legal Torch. By the way, Legal Torch already has some good quality backlinks pointing to it. It's already becoming an authority. The Circle of Legal Trust blog, I think, has an Alexa of around 600 right now and that's in less than four months. Um, you know, I got a page ranking of three within a couple of months, which isn't bad. You know, for a startup, it's only a couple months old domain. Uh, so we're attracting a ton of traffic from, from Google uh, Plus, Facebook, and Twitter. And as a group, we can really build it and make it really powerful. You know, like I say, like iron sharpening iron. And then, of course, you guys can link out to your own properties from it, too, which is really cool. Um, just be careful, everybody, with exact match anchors. Um, I think that Penguin is going to have an update pretty soon. I'm pretty sure. I can just feel it in my bones. You know, right after they destroy you with Panda, they want to like take you out completely with the Penguin. So if you're using a lot of exact match anchors from directories, get those things pulled out of there as quick as you can. Contact the people with the directories and say, please remove or no follow my link. Uh, directory exact match listings are the death knell of websites under Penguin. Uh, and start deleting your websites with click here's, view website, check these guys out. Uh, Mark, I think, sorry, I need to interrupt you there, Mike. I think it comes down to what we discussed earlier is diversity. Everything online, you need to be diverse. You need to have diverse links from, in other words, link directories, blog comments, various places. Different anchor text, naked anchor text, it's all diverse. Everything, you just have to think diversity. But also think quality as well. That's what you've got to throw in there as well. Diversity and quality, and you should be okay. I agree with Andre with the caveat that Google looks at anything more than maybe 3 or 4% exact match as over-optimization or potential spamming. 
I think the majority of your backlinks need to be naked anchors and branded anchors. That's what they are. So a branded anchor would be Eline Law from PC. A naked anchor would be just elinelaw.com. And the other ones are called dirty anchors. Your dirty anchors are your click here's, your view websites, learn more. Those are your dirties. The vast majority of your link needs to be dirty, branded, and naked. Stay away from exact match right now. You have too many already, all of us. Try to focus on building up the overall ratio of your dirties, branded, and naked. That's all your focus should be. And Google scores differently now than they used to. So if you have a click here next to the term personal injury attorney, it's my belief that Google is picking up personal injury attorney as if it was an, an exact match anchor. That makes sense? If it's in the same geography as your link, that's probably just like an exact match for those terms. You're taking a snapshot of the text around the link instead of looking at the link itself. As well as the page title and what the page is all about. True. They score the whole page. That's correct. Yeah. Andre is 100% right. But they definitely look at the surrounding text closest to the link as the primary factor in scoring that particular link. So you need to have lots of articles and lots of mentions on other attorney websites because they're the most related and relevant to law and what you want to rank for. And we just still happen to have a lot of members here who have lots of different websites. And if it's targeted and related to what you want to rank for and it's not a reciprocal link and they're doing it gratuitously because they like you and trust you, not like you're just you know, trying to game Google, then it's actually a good link. Um, and so the Circle of Legal Trust provides the ability for attorneys to vet each other. A natural link is considered a vote. That's what links are under Google's system. It's a vote. And vote buying is bad. It's illegal. It's evil. But a gratuitous link, like if I want to include you on my resources page on one of my blogs, and I'm doing it just because I want to, not because you sent me a guest post, then that's a valid link, and that's a good thing. And that's what we do here. So we'll all be able to help each other out a lot. We also have a forum, forum.circleoflegaltrust.com. I believe the address, Andre? Yeah, that's, that's still very much a work in progress, huh? Yeah. It's thinking of going a different route with that, but I'll talk to you with that, Mark. Well, we have a private way to contact the other members without creating an electronic footprint anywhere on Google where you guys who are attorneys can all hook up, send each other leads, it's confidential, um, and you can also say, hey, can you vote for me on AVO? Here's what I'd like the AVO uh, you know, thing to say about me. You know, if possible, this is some of the language I'd like you to use. Or, uh, hey, I saw you have a great page on this. Uh, could you maybe mention my site on that page? Here's, uh, you know, here's my link. Um, so it's a great way to communicate that way. And it's all gratuitous. We're not, you, you know, that's not what this group's about. We're not about trying to get links. We're about trying to help each other understand attorney search. Okay, and on that, I'm going to go. If you guys want to stay in line, I can end the video broadcast and leave it up. Thanks, guys, for letting me in.